So today we have the Outback Wilderness Edition in the geyser blue. This is a new color that's only offered on the Wilderness Edition. I'm gonna dive into the infotainment display and controls here in just a moment. But before we get into that, this car is sold, so it's getting ready to leave the lot. And I wanted to try to capture the color on video before it left the lot. So Subaru has offered a blue in the past called the Abyss Blue Pearl, which is a dark blue. They've also offered a Horizon Blue that you see commonly on the Forester and the Cross Trek. And then the third blue they've offered is the World Rally Blue, which is on the flagship car, the WRX STI. They've had that for many years. And so now they've got this unique color for the Outback Wilderness Edition. So let me know your all's thoughts in the comment section below. Do you like this color? Do you hate it? Is there something that you wish Subaru would do differently with it? If so, there's not anything I could do about it, but still kind of cool to get people's thoughts on it and at least see how people feel about this color. Me personally, I do like it. If you guys enjoy Subaru related topics, then please be sure to click the subscribe button down below. I post videos, sometimes multiple videos weekly, and I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos valuable. So if you do enjoy them, please be sure to click the like button. That would really help me out and I would greatly appreciate it. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing an overview of all of the buttons and controls on the infotainment display for your Outback. Now, this is going to be in the Wilderness Edition, but it's also gonna be very similar and identical in other new model Outbacks as well. So let's start with the easy stuff, and that is the analog buttons. So you've got your hazard lights, you have your volume button and power button. This is your front windshield defrost button your climate control for you and the passenger because it's dual climate. You have the ability to change channels with this dial and this is your rear windshield defrost and heated side mirrors. Starting at the top of the display you have these arrows on the left and the right and that will allow you to toggle through different vehicle information. You can see local weather. This is X mode. We'll get into that a little bit later. But this just allows you to see a quick display and dive into some of these different metrics or vehicle information that you might want to see or know about quickly. Down below here, you have your climate control. So this is touch screen. You can turn it on and off quickly just by a single click. You can adjust your temperature by going in here and using this, or you can use this little dial here, or you can also use this right here, the analog buttons. Now, if you want to sync up your seat with your passenger seat over here, you just click that button. And now whenever I adjust it, you'll see that both of these are increasing and decreasing based on the temperature that I set. You also have heated seats. So you have three settings for you and your passenger. So you can do that here as well. You have quick buttons for your fan speed you also have if you click on this right here the ability to adjust your fan speed here and you can change the vent position right here if you click on max ac that's going to turn the air conditioning on full blast if you have it on auto the fan speed is going to go based on the temperature that you have set and the temperature that is actually inside the car this little button right here will recirculate the cabin air. So if you're on, uh, if you're driving on a hot day and you've got your windows rolled up and you wanna keep the, instead of pulling air from outside constantly and you wanna recirculate your cold air, you can click that button and it'll recirculate into the cabin. And then this is just a quick on and off button for your AC. Right here, this is your auto start stop feature. So if you wanna quickly be able to turn that on and off, you can do so right here. The auto start stop feature, that will shut your car off whenever you come to a complete stop. And it does that to increase your fuel efficiency and decrease the emissions that are being put out into the environment. Over here, you have driver profiles. So if you select this and you connect your device wirelessly and you put your name in here, you can sync up your phone that you've connected wirelessly through Bluetooth. And now, whenever you get in your car, if you've got multiple drivers, you can always just click on, make sure your device, there's only one here right now, but make sure your name is selected and that way your device is connected to the car if you're listening to music or using your navigation on your phone. Right here, this little car icon is a quick option to get to vehicle settings to be able to make adjustments. I'll go over this in a little bit more detail in a moment, but 
Vehicle Dynamics Control, that is your traction control and stability. X Mode is that feature that we saw up here just a moment ago. This is just a quick way to get to it. So the car is all wheel drive at all times, but X Mode will actually help avoid slipping whenever one wheel loses traction. It'll send power only to the wheels that have traction and you can toggle between snow dirt or deep snow mud if you are in a, a much snowier or a slipperier situation, you can select that. So that's how you toggle quickly between normal and the uh, dual X mode option. Now this will deactivate automatically if you exceed 25 miles per hour. So don't worry about turning it off. So you can set it if you are on a steep hill and get out of a slippery situation and it'll automatically deactivate once you've exceeded that 25 miles per hour. Cruise control characteristics can be adjusted right here. And basically what this does is whenever your cruise control is set, say at 50 miles an hour, and the car in front of you had slowed down to maybe 40, well, whenever they get out of the way and your car wants to speed back up, it's gonna speed back up at a certain acceleration. So for example, if you have it set at standard or dynamic, it's gonna speed up much quicker once that slow car gets out of the way. Or if you do eco or comfort, it's gonna gradually speed back up to the speed that you originally set, which is 50 miles an hour. Auto vehicle hold, this can be turned on and off. And what that does is it allows you to sit at a light. You'll see where it turns on over here, it says AVH. It'll allow you to sit at a light, a long train, or even a drive-through lane without having to have your foot on the brake. So it'll automatically hold the brake for you and uh, that it can be activated right here and can easily be turned on and off. Steering responsive headlights, pretty self-explanatory, but the headlights will actually move with the steering of your wheel and is really helpful on dark roads. The auto start stop, we've already talked about it, but here's the secondary button to turn it on and off. Under driving assistance, if you go under this one, it's pre-collision braking. So that is the eyesight cameras up here in the left and the right. It will automatically detect objects in front of you, cars and people, and will automatically brake for you. If you ever wanted to turn that off, you can do so here. The lane departure prevention function. So that is the function that will alert you whenever you get too far to the left or the right side of the road. And if you wanted to turn that off altogether, you can do that here. Or if you wanted to adjust the settings to maybe only have a, a buzzer audible alert, you can do that there. Or if you want the visible and audible alert, you can click the all functions tab. BSD slash RCTA, this means blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert. So that is whenever you are backing up and whenever you get close to an object, it will you'll hear a audible alert, but you will also have the reverse automatic braking function here to help you avoid running into somebody when backing up. Under other, you just have your volume settings where you can adjust that and you also have the units. So depending on what country you live in, you can adjust that as well. Going back to our home screen, start up here at the top, we have navigation. So this car in particular has the TomTom -tom navigation, but with all new Subarus, you do have the option, even if it doesn't have TomTom -tom navigation built in, to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So you don't necessarily have to have navigation. This is just a nice added feature. To use the CarPlay, you just plug your phone up to the charge cable here and go to the apps and select on either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You've got the radio button, pretty self-explanatory. You can use the touch screen to toggle between different sources. You can also use this button over here to toggle between different sources. So it'll toggle through Bluetooth, CDs, USB. Also, by the way, if you have a CD player in the Outback, you just lift up your center console and you can see if you have a CD player. This one does have it. If yours doesn't have it, you can always get it added as an accessory, but I'll tell you it's not cheap if it's not already in the car. To save your favorite radio stations, you just find the station that you like and you click and hold. And that'll save that station for you so you can have it. AM, FM, and Sirius XM stations, your favorites all down here in the screen below. Media is where you would see your CD if it's in there or an auxiliary or even an iPod if you've got it connected. Under phone is where you can connect your phone wirelessly. So if you want to connect your phone, you can do so here and it'll prompt you to add it. You just go to the settings in your phone to uh, look for the Subaru icon and that will allow you to connect to this. It's pretty easy to do. Under apps, we've already selected this, but that's where you can access your CarPlay. Whenever you buy a new Subaru, you can get roadside assistance, and that is where you would get your Subaru Starlink subscription. You can also use the button here 
to call out to first responders if you ever need roadside assistance. Travel Link will show you things like local gas stations, you can look up sports, stocks, there's a ton of things, local weather, weather alerts, parking, a lot of different stuff that you can look up with that travel link. And then the My Subaru app, this is also a subscription where you can use your mobile phone to have remote start directly from your phone. You can get maintenance notifications and even the ability to set things like your next service appointment. Under car info, you can see different information about driving statistics. If you're on an angle, it'll show you the angle that you're at. Advanced package, you can click on any of these things and it'll tell you more about the different features, the different safety features on the car, like the pre-collision warning, automatic braking, and blind spot monitoring. And then under the maintenance tab, you can actually select things like, maybe you wanna set up a reminder for your next oil change. You can do so here. So right now it's set to remind you at 5,909. All new Subarus are recommended to get a full synthetic oil change at 6,000 miles. So this is a new vehicle and that's why it's set there. You can also set a specific date if you want. So you can go in and actually set that up manually if you wanna do that. We've already discussed the Starlink app and the My Subaru app under the app section. So we will go back over here to settings. And this is where you can really dive down and, and get into more in depth features that the car has. So we'll start with general. You can do things like changing your clock. You can make it automatically set up to uh, the local area or you can manually do it. So we'll just leave that on auto. Under display, you can change the brightness level, the contrast between the screen, or you can just set it back to default. You can even turn the display off. So if you ever turn your display off, you just click and hold. It'll come back on. Go back into the settings here. And guys, once you have your car and you've used it for a little while, you'll get used to this. I'm sure just like with your smartphone, if you've got one, at first it was a huge learning curve, but over time, things started to become second nature and the things that you find important and need to use, you'll be able to find it quickly on here. You can also connect to Wi-Fi sources. So when you're, you're updating the infotainment display or maybe you wanna update your maps, you can connect to a, a, a wireless router either at home if you're close enough in your garage or even local places. So it'll show you what the Wi-Fi networks are here whenever you're close to them. For example, you click on available Wi-Fi networks and it'll try to find them. So these are the ones that I'm closest to. You can also set up a hotspot through AT&T. So I think you can get like one gig for free. It's really easy to set this up, but this would be if you're traveling and maybe you have an iPad or something that doesn't have cellular data or a laptop and you wanna be able to connect to the internet. You can do so here. It's really easy to do. So you would just go to the Wi-Fi settings in your phone and look for the uh, Wi-Fi name, Subaru Wi-Fi, and then just put in this password to connect. And that's where you can set up the AT&T data plan if you decide you want to do that. I think it's somewhere like 10 or $20 a month if you wanted to set that up. Here's a reminder screen. So you can set uh, different dates in here. I'll show you in just a moment. We've already gone over the maintenance interval. So this is set up to remind you when your maintenance is due, uh, but I'll show you where the birthday and anniversary dates are in just a moment. Under the meter screen, you can actually change what's displayed. So for example, the meter information screen is actually over here. So right now it's showing the miles per gallon, but maybe you want it to show the outside temperature. You can change that or compass. You can see it changes right over there or even the gas range. So this is how many miles till E. So under camera, you can adjust your rear view camera and the steering lines when you've got the rear view. So see those orange lines, you can turn those on and off if you want. Under climate control, you can change this to change this little button right here. So maybe you want it to be a max AC button, maybe you want it to say to be the automatic button or the recirculation button. You can change all of that quickly here to your preferred settings.
language, of course, would be relevant to whatever language you speak, whatever country you live in. Tire pressure, again, whatever country you live in, you can change the units. You can have home screen shortcuts. So whenever this is on, if you go to your home screen and you go over here, you see a little shortcuts tab. So if you wanna add a shortcut, you just click on this. Maybe you want to add a, an FM radio shortcut. You would now see it here. So every time you come in here, go over here, you can quickly go to your FM radio. But if you don't want that on, you just go back into the settings and under home screen shortcuts, you turn that off. So now whenever you go back over here, it won't let you scroll over because those shortcuts are eliminated. So we'll go back over here and turn that back on. Welcome screen and goodbye screen. This is just on the screen. It'll tell you uh, hello or goodbye whenever you're getting in and out of the car. Widgets, you can change this. Maybe you don't want your, so for example, up here, you've got these. Maybe you don't want to see the average speed. Maybe you want to see the weather for the next three hours. You can display that up here just like this. So you can change those to whatever you want to see. Birthday list and anniversary list. Here's where you can add those dates in here to set reminders for anybody's birthdays or any anniversaries that you want to remember. Periodic rest notification. If you've been traveling for an extended period of time, it will remind you to take a break. Software update. This is just if you need to update the infotainment. Again, you could do that through a Wi-Fi source. Starlink app recovery. So this is if you're having trouble with your Starlink app on your display, you can actually reset this and, and restart it. Factory data reset. If you're having any issues with your infotainment display here, you can click reset and it'll change everything back to default settings. And a lot of times that will eliminate any problems maybe that you've been having. And system information will just show you what software you currently have. Of course, you can go in here and adjust all of your volume and sound settings to adjust bass and treble and whatever else. You can also adjust things like speed volume. So as your vehicle is speeding up, the volume will increase as well to compensate for the louder noise outside. Since your phone's connected through wireless Bluetooth, you can adjust your phone volume controls, not only what you hear, but also what other people hear. Under navigation, just like you can do on Google Maps, TomTom, Tom, the navigation in your infotainment display will allow you to adjust different things. For example, you can show different things on the map as you're driving, like local gas stations or point of interest. So you can do that here. You can toggle it on and turn these different things on that you want to be able to see while you're driving. So here again, you can show uh, local parking, gas stations and rest areas. You can change things like the amount of distance that's displayed on your trip or even the time left on your trip. So there's a ton of different things you can go in here and adjust to your personal preferences, things like avoiding tolls or carpool lanes, unpaved roads and ferries. If you ever need to update your GPS, you can go here to map update and you'll have to do it most likely through Wi-Fi. Under phone, you can manage devices that are connected. So you can connect multiple devices. You can see recent call and message history. You can change the device name. So this is what pops up whenever you look for that Bluetooth source on your phone settings to be able to connect initially. And that is it. That's your in-depth overview of the infotainment display. Ooh.